In this video, we're going to look at single graph transformations. So, given any graph f of x, we can reflect, move, or scale it. Now, each transformation we have influences the points on the graph, and in order to keep track of these influences, it's good to use a table. So, that's what you'll see throughout this video for each of the transformations that we'll examine. So we'll firstly look at vertical transformations. Um, so we'll investigate the graph for each one and then I'll give you an example for each one. So let's start with f of x. So here's the graph of f of x here. And I want to know what happens when you draw f of x plus a. So I'll just change that to blue so that when it moves, you can still see the original. So hopefully you can see what happen, what's happened there. Again, I'll emphasise that f of x is the original graph. The red one, sorry, is the original graph, f of x. And f of x plus a is this blue one. And hopefully you saw there that it moved up by a units. Okay, now we don't know what a is at the moment, and we're just using a general example, so that's fine. And what you might notice here is at this point, 0, 0, the origin has moved up, it's now 0 something. If we've moved up by a units, it's 0 a. So we've influenced the y coordinates by a. We've added a on to each of the y coordinates here. So if we had a point on f of x, which was x, y, that point transforms to x, y plus a. Now looking at a specialised example here, so if we had f of x and then f of x plus 5 on the graph of f of x, we've got two points here that I've pointed out, 0, 0 and 2, 4. And adding y onto both of those y-ordinates, we get 0, 5 and 2, 9. Now, let's continue. We'll still start with f of x. What happens this time when we draw f of x minus a? So you may have guessed already. And you can see here that the graph is moving down by a units. So on f of x, if we had the point x, y, that would transform to the point x, y minus a. So that's the general form. If we just look at a specialised example here, if we had f of x, again we've got the points 0, 0 and 2, 4. And if we draw the graph of f of x minus 3, those points then become 0, negative 3, because we've taken 3 from the y-ordinate, so 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and 2, 4 becomes 2, 1, because we've subtracted the 3 from the y-ordinate there. So again here, we're starting with the graph of f of x, as you can see. We want to know this time what happens when we draw a multiplied by f of x. So a f of x. So just turn that to blue and you'll see the transformation. Now the graph almost appears to be getting thinner as such. Um, but what is actually happening to, happening to the graph is it has been vertically stretched by a units. So each of the y coordinates is being multiplied by a. So if we had the point x, y on the graph of f of x, um, that same point would become x, a, y on the graph of a, f of x. And if we look at a specialised example here, we've got f of x and 3 f of x. So on the graph of f of x, we have the points 1, 1 and 2, 4. And those became 1, 3, because the y coordinate was multiplied by 3. And the same here, 2, 4 became 2, 12, because the y coordinate was multiplied by 3. Now, again, start, starting with f of x. And this time we want to know what happens when we draw 1 over a multiplied by f of x. And you can see here graph almost appears to be going outwards 
came out of space. And what's happening here is the graph is being vertically compressed by A units. So what's happening is the Y coordinate is being multiplied by 1 over A. Or you could say it's being divided by A. So if we take an example here, we've got F of X in red and then a quarter F of X in blue. So on the graph of F of X, we've got negative 1, 1 and 2, 4, and those were both, the y-ordinates of these were both divided by 4. And that gave us negative 1, a quarter, and 2, 1. Now, moving on slightly, we're done with vertical transformations as such. Let's go look at this one. So, we'll start with f of x again. We want to know what happens when we draw negative f of x. So here we've got f of x in red again. And that is negative f of x. So what's actually happened there, hopefully you can see there's a line of symmetry here, which is the x-axis. And actually we have a reflection over the x-axis when we multiply f of x by negative 1. So you can see here that all of our y ordinates in f of x have become negative y, basically, in the graph of negative f of x. Take a concrete example here, um, or specialised example rather, if we've got the point 2, 4, um, that becomes 2, negative 4. Because, again, we've multiplied the y ordinate by negative 1. Now let's have a look at some horizontal transformations this time. So again, starting with f of x, obviously. Um, what happens when we draw f of x plus a? Now, we've seen f of x plus a. This is f of x plus a. So the plus a is in the bracket this time. So let's see what happens here. Now, Hopefully you're seeing that the graph is moving to the left. So the graph moves left by A units. And what's actually happening to our coordinate of our points this time? So if we've got the point x, y on the graph of f of x, that same point on the graph of f of x plus a is actually x minus a. Why? So you'll notice already that all of the transformations we've looked at have been vertical transformations and they've all had an effect on the y-ordinate of the point. But this time we've got a horizontal transformation and it's had an effect on the x-ordinate of the point. And you can see as well it's f of x plus a but our um, the influence that that has had on our point is x minus a. We just need to be very careful that we remember that there. So if we have a look at a more specialised example, um, on the graph of f of x, we've got the point 0, 0 and 2, 4. It's f of x plus 5 that we've drawn. Um, so that means we need to subtract 5 from our x ordinates. So 0 minus 5 negative 5, 0, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3, 4. Now, this time we'll draw f of x minus a. You might have guessed it. f of x plus a moves to the left, and f of x minus a moves to the right, as you can see now. So we can see it moves to the right by a units, and the effect that that has on the points then, it's x plus a, y. Looking at a specialised example, again using the point 0, 0 and 2, 4. And if we have those same points in the graph of f of x minus 7, that becomes 7, 0 and 9, 4. So we can see that we've added 7 
to both of our x ordinates here. Now this time we're going to draw f of ax. And again, you may have noticed so far, anything that's happening inside the bracket here seems to have an effect on the x ordinate of the point. Anything that was happening outside of the bracket, that was a vertical transformation, and it seemed to have an effect on the y ordinate of the point. So that's worth bearing in mind as well. So what happens when we draw f of x, f of ax, sorry? Now again, it appears as though the graph is getting thinner. And what's actually happening here is the graph is being horizontally compressed by a units. So what's happening to the point here? Well, if we've got x, y on the graph of f of x, that becomes 1 over a x, y on the graph of f of a x. So we're actually dividing the x by the a, whatever this value is here. Um, and that gets us a new x ordinate there. Have a look at an example here. If we've got f of x and we've got the points 2, 4 and 4, 16 on the graph of f of 2x, so remember that means we're dividing our x ordinates by 2, that becomes 1, 4 and 2, 16. Now, again, what happens here when we draw f of 1 over a times x? You can see the graph appears to be going outwards as such. And what's actually happening is it's being horizontally stretched by a units. So each of our x ordinates here are being multiplied by a. And looking at specialised example, we've got f of x and we've got the point negative 2, 4 and 1, 1. On the graph of f of a third x, that means we need to multiply our x ordinates by 3. We get negative 6, 4 and 3, 1. And one final one, again starting with f of x, showing you a different graph this time. We want to know what happens when we draw f of negative x. And actually what happens is the graph is reflected over the y-axis. Um, so you can see there that the y-axis is the line of symmetry. And our point was xy, it's now negative xy. We'll just look at another example here on the graph of f of x. If we had the point 1, 4, that then on the graph of f of negative x becomes negative 1, 4. So you can see the change that that makes there. So just to summarise everything we've done, if we've got f of x plus a, that was the graph moving up by a units. And the change to the points was x, y plus a. With f of x minus a, very similar to the previous one, the graph moves down by a units this time. And the point would be x, y minus a. If we had a f of x, the graph was vertically stretched by a units. And the point became a sorry, x, a, y, and if it was 1 over a times f of x, we got a graph which was vertically compressed by a units. So we were finding 1 over a multiplied by y for our y ordinate, or you can divide y by a. With negative f of x, the graph was reflected over the x-axis, so all of our y ordinates um, were multiplied by negative 1. Then inside the brackets this time, where there are changes, if we had f of x plus a, the graph moves left by a units. So we have x minus a, y. Similarly, f of x minus a, the graph moves right by a units with x plus a, y. This time, horizontal compression. So that's f of ax. 
and that meant instead of um, so that meant our x ordinate was being divided by a or multiplied by one over a. And for the horizontal stretch by a units, that's f of one over a x. We were multiplying our x ordinates by a. And finally, the graph of f of negative x, that was a graph reflected over the y-axis, that means we were multiplying all of our x-ordinates by negative 1. So now you should be able to go and transform graphs which have one change to them, um, so any of these, and you'll be able to plot the points, um, like I showed you with all the specialised examples, and then draw the graph transformation.